This video is sponsored by CuriosityStream, which together with my streaming service Nebula has my latest brand spanking new exclusive working titles video on Dexter. More on that at the end. Swapping out stars for rings? Sonic style logo. Yo, are we getting a Space Harrier movie? That game was so hard. Would be a sad movie. Ooh, or Altered Beast? That game was also so hard. Sega games are hard. New sound, but still reminiscent of the old Coral voice name drop. All right. The real Green Hill Zone is his fully rendered 3D homeworld. An intro to his speed and some speed rolling right away. We're off to an accurate start. She took care of me. She was basically Obi-Wan Kenobi. <laughs> Death of the Mentor Shadowing. Just a bunch of echidna? A whole tribe of knuckles? Knuck knuckleses? Knuckla? I doubt they know the way. These rings will be your most important possession. They keep him alive in the game, and here they keep him alive in the new world. And eh, checks out. I'm bored. Hey, buddy! Where's the fire? Got kids living around here. Oh, that was kind of funny. Sorry. Honesty. Tom, we need you down on Main Street. There's been a violent gang shooting. Just kidding. A duck stole a bagel, but they do need it back. I still haven't gotten over the cancellation of Happy Endings, and Adam Pally is a huge reason, so make him famous, Sonic. I'm good with it. Saving a new turtle friend. This is great. You're doing amazing. Queen is always a win. Hey, title screen, logo, bandana, and stolen donut lord subject. And hilltop road sign. I like that they build his speed up slowly. So far, all we know concretely is that he can easily go 300 miles per hour, but solo ping pong seems like it would be a step up. And if I'm ever discovered, I'll follow Longclaw's instructions and use my rings to escape to a new planet. All right, so Chaos Emeralds exist. Also, clearly Sega Saturn World wasn't gonna work out. Also, that's the checkered bonus level, right? With all the Chaos Emeralds on it? There is one person in town who's actually on to me. He calls me Santa Hedgehog. And I know you're real! Get out of there, you trash pandas. Don't be hasty. A Sonic Rocket team-up movie could be a good time. $4,600 a month for a one-bed, one-bath? I'm assuming that's honesty in advertising, which really feels like a way to just encourage people to stay out of San Francisco. And she's looking at million-dollar apartments? Hope they don't find out about that time you use the neighbor's Wi-Fi. Correction, I'm still using the neighbor's Wi-Fi. Hey, about a Sonic, hey, about a Sonic, is so wing about a Sonic. This entire sequence is such a true, perfect introduction for Sonic, confirming that he's just a kid who has a kid's imagination and would love some friends. But he's also got skills that make it mostly possible to play an entire baseball game alone. Mostly. We still haven't gotten to his time in a bottle scene, but this seems like a pretty clear indication that he moves as fast as he wants. He's a little weird. Weird? No, no, he's no way. He's a psychological tire fire. And you weren't all you thought you were, Saul, now were you? Right, I guess technically you were more than you thought you were. You might think the Red Eye is a HAL reference, but you'd be exposing that you never made it to Red Eye in Sonic and Knuckles. Or maybe Sonic 3 was referencing 2001? Hmm. Yep, to the glasses, that hair, and mustache. They follow their program. They don't need time off to get drunk and put the boat in the water. So the thing about Jim Carrey as Robotnik is that he was probably always crazy, which works, but the real special level of reality detachment happens after this movie and Jim is perfect for either part. Nobody cares! Love the heat shimmer from its propulsion that comes into frame before the drone. Your eyes weren't expertly trained to spot tracks by the Native American shadow wolves. Fun fact, shadow wolves are a real thing. In the Olive Garden. Ah, because when you're there, your family. You can't trick me with your product placement. Be gone, brand! Ah! Uh, uh. Pretty good reason to be stranded, and now he'll die the first set of spikes he jumps on. Fine, come with me. <laughs> uh, little help? Yeah, Sonic also doesn't do well with water. Mr. Doctor, Dr. Robotnik, but my dentist calls me Rob. Sure he doesn't call you Evo. I hope they aren't scanning me with x-rays. I had kind of an embarrassing lunch. Ha, <laughs> because he was eating garbage earlier. Love the lasers hitting dust particles in the air and the reflections of the lasers in Sonic's eyes. Don't hurt him! <laughs> Never want to pass up a Jim Carrey streak. Call optical illusions. Tell him I need new frames. You sure Olive Garden doesn't have them? I kid, a person's frames are nothing to mock. Get back my rings and use them to go to the Mushroom Planet. The idea that Mushroom Hill Zone and every level is actually a different planet actually makes the Sonic games feel a lot bigger. I'm totally cool saying goodbye now. So, as I crashed into the cold, dark water of the Pacific... Definitely more of a southwest heading, so I understand the problem. Pile it on, good grief. I'm wet, I'm cold, 
There's a fish on my head! Ben Schwartz's homage to Lloyd's despair. Our pet's heads are falling off! Good stuff, Ben. And Fluffy Sonic was a quick dude win. Yes. Look, I'll challenge that he could shake his fur back down, but the perfectly poofed out fur and quills make sense given his speed. Maximum inertia exerted on each hair forcing them straight out. That's probably a fake physics lesson for you. Somewhere between centripetal and centrifugal force. I'm leaning centripetal. Woo -woo! But there's a ZZ Top cover band. Okay, so how does Sonic know who ZZ Top is, but not a payphone? What is it, a teleportation box? It's a payphone. Well, Sonic is even younger than Zoomers, and how many Zoomers in my audience have actually seen a payphone? So, pop culture knowledge gap forgiven. You just sit there and be you. Sless. My brain keeps going back and forth between, is this just Jim Carrey, or is he really playing Robotnik, and then he does something like this, and I realize I don't really care because he's awesome. The only thing worse than <laughs> That's an expectation subversion. Speed does not accuracy infer. Also, he used his right hand here when he was using his left hand to pitch earlier, so that's probably the real issue. Ding, ding, ding. Break, please, break, please, break this button. Please, break, please. <laughs> Persistence. Even his interpretation of what a bar fight is like is guileless. And since it's been too long, that's your Cinema Wins Word of the Week. So, Sonic has never been Quicksilver, but if you're gonna do a movie about a fast guy, why wouldn't you go this far? We find out later that his power is unlimited. I think they handled his speed about as well as they could. He's unlimitedly fast. Solo ping pong is no big deal, and basically morphing through space time is also no big deal. The boy does love his chili dogs. Patriotism? Did you see how much toilet paper I used? <laughs> the next person that goes into that bathroom will have nothing to wipe with. A line clearly written before the TP crisis of March 2020. <laughs> Wonder of the world destruction shadowing. <laughs> Self pillow fight. And that's the Sonic teetering on the edge animation from the game. Oh, that's awful. What did you eat? I think it's called a chili dog. To be fair, it was like six. There's no people. Just breathable air and giant mushrooms and stuff. At least you won't be the only fun guy. No. Don't ever do that again. <laughs> Seriously. If you ask me, puns spore. They're boring, boring. Let's just admire how Sonic's fur and spikes move subtly with his head shakes. Now that's what I call good cop, bad cop. <laughs> <laughs> Keeping your employees on their toes. Please, I clean out their gutters. I, I jumpstart their cars in the winter. They could call anybody to do that. Sure, they can call anybody, but they don't. They call you. Huh, weird that Green Hills sends a cop for that sort of thing. Hard to believe, some would say. Yes, some real Sonic destruction. Guess I had a bonus life. Another gift from Scott Pilgrim, I suppose? Door surfing. It's always door surfing. I don't care. I feel just like Vin Diesel. Again, sizes of cities in America. It's a very small town. Uh, it's not small. There are hundreds of people. That's a small town, dude. Nah. Themes of Vin Diesel movies? It's all about family, Tom. Yeah. Quick suggestion. Roll up into a ball and smash him with your body. Sonicking advice. Get rid of it. I'm trying. Throw it out the window. Throw it anywhere. <laughs> James Marston will never get enough credit. <laughs> One of the things that makes Sonic so endearing is his occasional fish out of water traits. The bomb and speed didn't blink and beep. Aw, he still couldn't get that high five. Some Japanese to honor Eggman's true origin. Not only does the Poppy family's Where Evil Grows have a super 16-bit music feel opening to it, but anyone who pretends like Robotnik couldn't dance Joker to shame. So I'd actually buy that Robotnik pretends to be a robot because he's a weirdo and he thinks robots are better than people. My machines are diligent, relentless. They're everything to me. Ah! <laughs> what do I look like, an imbecile? Of course I want a latte. I love the way you make them. <laughs> Honesty. Did I mention Sonic is both a Jude win and a wife win? Because they both loved him. Strangely, neither cared for the original design. <laughs> and the look is complete. You said you wanted to help people in real trouble, right? Blue alien hedgehogs and still count as people, right? I think so too. Okay. You know, expectation subversion. Relationship turmoil is a given for easy conflict. 
Love it. Barely even an argument. No good. You need a special key to get to the roof. I mean, you could just run up the side of the building. But let's be honest here. Sonic has been stalling since he ran into the Pacific because he wants a friend and doesn't really want to leave Earth. What won't Dyson get into? To be fair, the pod is pretty iconic Robotnik throughout the series. Your flying eggs are pretty impressive, Mr. Eggman. You know, it's a fun reference to Robotnik's other name either way, but it also makes sense since Sonic originally called Tom Donut Lord and Maddie Pretzel Lady since that was how he was introduced to them. Just like the drone egg looking things for Robotnik. <laughs> It wasn't actually last week the first time I won it, but I did re-upload it last week, and a Sonic movie without Sonic tapping his foot in annoyance at whomever is controlling him wouldn't be a Sonic movie at all. And much like the game, just jumping on top destroys them. Although, aren't there supposed to be prisoner animals on top? <laughs> yes, we're just getting all the video game references here. Pick him up before you get hit again. After seeing the Smash Brothers pose, you'd think Robotnik would just bail on the whole thing. Also, yep. Ha! I know where he got that idea. And another check off his bucket list. Love how slow and confident Robotnik comes through the portal. Fun shot to look at, too. You're an astonishing little creature. Compliments. I'm the donut lord, you son of a bitch. Gut punch censoring. You were about to die. That's our sheriff you're messing with. Max the rescue. His name was Sonic. This was his home. And he was my friend. Yeah. Standing up for your little buddy, who only wanted a friend. And Sonic's alive. This is my power, and I'm not using it to run away anymore. Seriously, he's got friendship. It's a powerful thing. I'm using it to protect my friends. You know, I think they're finally selling why Sonic jumping on top of Robotnik's ships in the game eventually destroys them. Also, Sonic Spinball was probably the Sonic game I put the most time into because it was so stupid hard. So this is working for me. Teamwork. <laughs> the gentlest but most rewarding Barney Stinson level high five ever. How are you gonna slow down the Sonic game theme like that and make it all emotional and sweet? Letter from the president? You'll see. Okay. Did you guess? Did you know that I'd add that win back in and throw another one on because a certain level of self-aware product placement brings it back around again? And sometimes we need to just accept that people gotta pay bills. You knew. Have you tried their never-ending pasta bowl? Man, even Ozzy sees Sonic. Race car bed for a guy who runs faster than one. Ah, this movie is actually a Robotnik origin story and I'm 100% here for it. A little sunburn for the red nose, flight suit was already there, and the mustache because... My grasp on sanity remains absolute. 16-bit credits retelling of the story, always a good choice. I found him. I just hope I'm not too late. Tails! And even with his voice actor. Eh, I'll watch more of this. Obviously, when you add Olive Garden and the Fast and the Furious together, you get one thing. Family. And that's actually what this movie is about. Well, friends and friends as family, which again, neither street racing nor Alfredo sauce changes your DNA. So obviously it's not the most original theme in the world, but that doesn't ruin the feels. Sonic the Hedgehog is a bit of an alien origin story, a buddy road movie, and an all-around action-adventure comedy. It's hard to start a new series, which this clearly intends to be, especially when video game movies suffer at the box office. Safe is usually the best bet. This is pretty much a hot take, but when I think about Iron Man, the movie that really launched the modern version of Cinematic Universe model, I don't really reminisce over the plot. The characters and visuals were fantastic, no doubt, but without Robert Downey Jr., you know? It's a hot take, I haven't seen it in a while. Plus, you could call Avengers the movie that really launched the MCU. But anyway, the point is that Iron Man 1 didn't take many risks, except for casting. Sonic creates a solid foundation for future movies. It didn't feel like that's all it was doing, I guess unless you're a huge Robotnik traditionalist, but it gets Sonic on Earth, he makes a friend, and defeats the first threat. The primary goal for a movie like this is to keep the kids' eyes on screen and get the adults to chuckle. And chuckle I did, even in this very video. Sorry, Major, what was your name? Benny. Nobody care! It talks. Almost constantly. Do you have your child in that bag? No. I mean, yes, it's a child, but it's not mine. I go back and forth between thinking it's super cool that they decided to listen to the fans and also feel super bad for the digital artists that most likely had to put in a lot of time, and if history is any indicator, probably didn't get the compensation they deserved. 
I can't really find anything about it. For now, I'll stay optimistic that Paramount took care of them. I think the biggest reason they decided to originally keep his eyes smaller was something I noticed through the movie. How much white of his eyes there is? When everything is matte, it's no big deal, but now I'm just constantly wondering how he keeps dust out of those giant gooey blobs. You're welcome for that. But he does look way better now, so well done, artists. You really nailed it. Regardless of what he looks like, it's not easy for a human to play opposite a full CG character. But if there's a man who's proven he can do it, it's James Marsden. Hey, buddy! Where's the fire? The only time it falls apart a bit is when they have to physically interact. Otherwise, I always felt like Sonic and Tom were in the same room. Credit to Marsden. Obviously, credit to Ben Schwartz, too. Jaleel White's shoes are not easy to fill. That is Gross. But Ben adds his own flair, and I'm pretty much gonna love everything Jean Ralphio does. I mentioned I'm torn about Jim Carrey because it took me a second to just accept that he was going to be Jim Carrey in this movie. But I slowly realized that's what Dr. Robotnik calls for. 90s off-the-wall Jim Carrey. He works in this movie, and honestly, it was fun to see him return to his goofy roots. Rub that in my orphan face. I'd watch more with this cast. I think they can open it up more next time. Probably hold off on Knuckles and some of the other side characters if you're going to use Tails, but there's room for a lot of fun series here. If I had one one tiny little other complaint. The title sequence was a little too quick for my taste. If I'm honest, I enjoy a nice, long, thematically appropriate title sequence with layers of meaning beyond what you first perceive. Kind of like, oh, I don't, I don't know, Dexter's intro? And hey, if you want to hear me talk about Dexter, genuinely one of my favorite and arguably one of the best title sequences of all time, click my link at the top of the description and sign up with Curiosity Stream to get access to Nebula. If you're new here, yes, together with a bunch of other amazing YouTubers, we created our own streaming service video platform. And on that service, we made working titles, where each episode is from a different creator who looks at a TV show title sequence and explains why it's awesome. I did one for Stranger Things, and just yesterday I published my new video on Dexter. They're really enjoyable to make, and they are exclusive to Nebula. And the best way to get access to Nebula for free is to sign up for Curiosity Stream at my link in the description. Just $2.99 a month or $14.99 for a whole year gets you a premium membership with unlimited access to thousands of documentaries and nonfiction titles. And since we had Jean Ralphio today, what better original can I offer than one with Ron Swanson himself? The History of Home, narrated by Nick Offerman. It would have been a great segue anyway, but it would be my recommendation regardless. Hearing Nick discuss where, how, and why homes are constructed and all the different materials used around the world throughout history, things he's equipped to discuss. I know more than you. All right. Is always a good time. It's an entertaining and informative watch. So check out the link at the top of the description, use promo code CINEMAWINS to sign up, and then you'll get an email that will give you access to Nebula for free forever as long as you stay subscribed to Curiosity Stream. And you'll be able to watch my working titles video on Dexter, where I promise to make your next breakfast really uncomfortable.